Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Somos Biology. In this video lecture, we are going to talk about the lytic lysogenic switch of bacteriophage lambda, which is one of the most important topic from virology. And you need to understand lytic lysogenic switch for bacteriophage lambda. We can also call it as lysogenic lytic switch. Doesn't matter. In in reality, we can call, you must call it as a lysogenic lytic switch because lysogeny is a phase where the bacteriophage incorporates its viral DNA inside the host bacterial DNA and it remain as a prophage for generation after generation and the bacteria can divide so as the viral uh, viral DNA should replicate naturally. But after when the environment is favorable for the virus particle to come out, then the lysogeny should shift itself to the lytic phase and again virus particles must begin and the process should continue. In this case, we are going to see how exactly lysic, ly lytic lysogenic switch is done. Now, switching is something from lysogenic to lytic, means the phage DNA is again being uh, removed from the bacterial DNA and then start replication and start packaging. But we are going to talk about the molecular mechanism behind the process of lysic, ly lytic lysogenic switch. Sorry. And in this case, uh, before going into the details of lytic lysogenic switch, you need to understand this uh, structure of the phage uh, circular uh, DNA. This is the phage DNA. What you can see in this phage DNA is very simple. You can see the phage tail in the bottom and the phage head. So the bottom 50% portion is with the phage tail and phage head and the up 20% uh, up 50% not 50 is near about 60-40 so up 40% up portion here from this site which is uh, there are two separate sites is present one is integration site INT another one is excision site XIS that are genes controlling the integration and excision respectively okay and this is ATTP which is a point where chromosome separates and integrate to the host. So ATTP is the attachment site. This is where the viral DNA gets cleaved and get incorporated with the bacterial DNA. And once lytic cycle switch is done, lysic, lysogenic lytic switch is done, then again this is the site from where the phage uh, DNA gets separated from the bacterial DNA. Now here you can see in the top side, we have complete list of the main operon involved in the process of lysis or lysogenic cycle. So lytic or lysogenic cycle you can clearly see there are multiple proteins involved. So we'll zoom into here and we are going to see uh, how exactly all these different structures look like. So we, this is the close up view of this uh, all the important gene and their protein factors involved in the lytic lysogenic switch. And I'm going to describe them one at a time. Remember one thing at the center we have C1. And at the terminal side, in the right hand side, we have C2. In the left hand side, we have C3. So what are these? These are uh, the very important words. C1 involves in the process of maintaining lysogeny. So C1 protein represses the excision and lysis of the host. So basically, C1 influence lysogeny. If C1 is present, if C1 protein is being made, then that indicates the lysogeny will be incorporated. Okay, and C1 inhibits the lytic phase, it initiates the lysogeny cycle. So C1 is very important for lysogeny only. And apart from that, if you talk C2, uh, C2 and C3 both stimulates the promoter that is PRE. This is the PRE promoter for making C1. So C2 and C3's job is to make more C1. So they are always helping in the process of lysogeny, not in the process of lytic cycle. So it's clear. Now we come to the two more promoters, promoter in the left hand side PL, promoter in the right hand side PR. And here you can see in the promoter, we have operator, operator left hand side 1, 2, 3 and operator right hand side 1, 2, 3. And somewhere between operator right 2 and operator right 3, we have another promoter that is PRM, which is also responsible for making C1 protein, uh, C1 uh, for, for responsible for transcription of C1, thus making C1 protein. So this is simple. So C1, C2, C3 and they are related promoters that are involved in the process of lysogeny, not lytic phase. Now what is involved in the lytic phase then? Two more components are out there, N and CRO. Both are involved in the process of lytic cycle. N protein is an anti-terminator that prolongs the transcription after the termination as well. You can see that TL is the terminator site in the left hand side, TR is the terminator site in the right hand side. So normally the process should start in from the promoter, the transcription process should start from the promoter left let's say and it will continue to make N, it should end in 
termination site that is TL. But if N protein is present in more concentration, then the transcription should continue beyond terminator and it will continue to make C3. In this side also, it should stop at the terminator right side or TR side. But if N protein is present in high concentration, then the transcription will not stop in the terminator. It will move to make more C2. Okay. So this is the idea of N protein. It's an anti-terminator. So if N is present in high concentration, no matter whether the terminator is reached, the process will continue. The transcription will continue to make C3 and C2 from left side and right side respectively. Now, apart from that, we have CRO, CRO protein, represses the action of C1, thus stimulating lysis. So CRO protein's job is to stimulate lytic cycle, to stimulate the lysis of the cell and CRO protein will inhibit the job of C1. C1 will inhibit the job of CRO. Basically, CRO and C1 are regulatory proteins and they can bind to operator, OL1, OL2, OL3, OR1, OR2, OR3. But between C1 and CRO, C1 has more affinity towards the operators. So if C1 and CRO both are present in equal concentration, C1 will always bind to the operator site. It will not allow the CRO to bind because C1 can bind with more affinity. But if CRO protein is present in high concentration than C1, then obviously CRO will bind to the operator sites. That's the simple idea. This is what you need to understand at the very beginning that C1 for lysogeny, CRO for lytic and N protein is the anti-terminator that is required for lytic movement or lytic cycle movement. Okay. This is what you need to understand right now. And also need to know that PRE and PRM are promoters from where C1 protein can be made. Okay. So now let's move on to the next part. And that is the part of animated lecture regarding lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle. So what happens in lysis and lysogeny? Let's see that. So this is the very first situation where the right and left hand operators are being transcribed and being translated. So both left and right side, they are continuing to make more CRO and more N protein. So now as they start to make more N protein, what this N protein will do? The N protein along with the transcription uh, complex will allow it to move beyond the termination side because N protein is the anti-terminator. So it will move beyond transcription side, so it uh, terminator side, so it will make more, start making C2 and C3. So remember, CRO is being made from the start point of the transcription. So as the CRO is being made, we know that CRO is an operator binding protein. So CRO start to bind operator L1, L2, L3, R1, R2, R3. But as N is being prepared, N allows to produce more and more C2 and C3 protein. But the time has passed. The time is gone because C2, C3 protein must produce more C1. But it takes some time to make C2 and C3 protein. But by that time, it should produce C2 and C3 protein. CRO is being produced in higher concentration. So now C2 and C3 can produce C1. But as I told you, C1 will be produced very less. CRO is produced in high concentration. So if the CRO is at a higher concentration than C1, then CRO will bind to the operator side. So this is exactly what's happening that the CRO is now bound to all the operator side, operator 1, 2, 3 in the left and right, both. Now, first rate of transcription results in the filling of all the three operators by the CRO protein. Okay. And once that is done, this is the type, this is the particular situation where C2, C3 are made. They will make C1. But what happened is that if CRO binds to the operator, then further production of C1 is not possible because the operators are filled. And this is kind of a negative feedback. If the operators are fit, if the operators are jammed by CRO or by C1, it's not going to produce more C1. So C1 auto regulate itself. If C1 concentration is adequate, if C1 fills the operator region, it will not make more C1. If CRO fills the operator region, it will again not make more C1. So CRO will inhibit the C1 to be produced. So as the, there is no C1, so no lysogeny, CRO interact to all the operator sites. Now it makes the cell ready for the lysis, for the lytic cycle. So the process begins for the lysis. This is what happens in the molecular level for lysis. Now I'll go back and I'll teach you how lysogenic cycle occurs. So again, process starts with transcription complex. They continue to make what in? They continue to make CRO. So CRO start being prepared, N start being prepared. But now somehow if N is prepared more, then what happens is that the transcription complex as the N is the anti-terminator, it will move beyond the termination site that is T1, uh, TL and TR. So they continue to make C2 and C3. Now C2 and C3 together will now allow 
the transcription and translation of C1. So more C1 protein will be made. So from PRE and PRM, from PRE and PRM, C1 is made. So more C1 protein will be made. Now at this point, there will be a concentration difference between CRO and C1. If C1 protein continue to be built, now C1 continue to bind to the operator region 1. Operator 1 in the left side, OL1. Operator region in the right side, OR1. So it continues to bind. And then what happens? Transcription complex should come and transcription complex will continue to make more C1. And as they make more and more C1, this C1 concentration is getting increased than CRO. And I told you that even if the concentration is equal between CRO and C1, C1 has higher affinity towards the operator. So C1 will remove the CRO and bind itself. Okay. So C1 continues to bind itself. CRO will be replaced by C1. And as the C1 binds itself, finally the C1 concentration is high and C1 will also bind to the third operator that is OL3 and OR3. As C1 is now completely filling all the operator, it indicates to prevent the further production of C1. So in this case, C1 auto-regulate its production as I mentioned you earlier. So now C1 is completely filling all the operator in the left hand side and the right hand side. So due to this filling, now it's done and afterwards what happens is that it causes the lysogeny. So that is indication of lysogeny. Okay, that's how the lysogenic cycle is done. That's how uh, basically uh, the C1 will fill the operator regions and it indicates the phage DNA to be integrated to the bacterial DNA and this process continues. Okay, so lysogeny will be achieved. So that's all about the lytic cycle of lambda phage. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.